What is going on with this E12 behind me? It's been a while since we've had any updates. If you guys aren't familiar, this is the E12 528i that I drove home from LA. Bought it on Bring a Trailer earlier in the year, drove it home, did good. This thing is M90 powered with a four speed. The five speed was stolen from it. And what are we doing with it, right? Like what I know I talked about all these plans or trying to decide what I'm gonna do. Um, making it my own, right? Because I want to make this car my own. So now if you remember the last episode I featured this car, we were looking at whether or not it was an M90 or if it wasn't. I did a lot of research, I did a, a boroscope check, and still to this day the results are inconclusive because there's so much conflicting information on these cars and the numbers on the engines and stuff. And you know, the M90s are supposed to have the, you know, the white L and the raised water passage, which it didn't have, but then some early ones didn't have it. Basically the block matches up with M90 numbers. The head does not. So it has confirmed a different head, um, a head from a 1984 M30 probably, um, cause the M90s weren't made into the 84. So, kind of inconclusive. It had flat top pistons, which at the time of filming I thought meant, okay, it's standard compression. But now I've come to find out that the piano tops are the high comp B34s, the flat tops are M90, and then the you know M30s low compression I think have like dishes or something in them. Um, so yeah, we're still inconclusive, but that engine is in not so good shape. It is in a critical form. Uh, it seems to overheat. It uh, runs, I think, really poorly. Um, I think it's just it's it's gonna need it's gonna need some love. It's still running L Jet from a stock eighty one. So even if it is a uh, M ninety, it's running on a really really barbaric engine management that is worthless for this car. Um, what this thing should be on is a Mega Squirt really if we wanted to get it kind of how it should be. But here's the engine on the thing. This engine bay is kind of all over the place. All the factory L-Jet stuff. And I mean it runs, it drives, but needs some love. I got suspension for it, I got these new seats for it, flow fit, um, and they look good and I love it. And I love this car with the Euro bumpers and the Zender kit. I need to find some cool period correct wheels for it. But yeah, I plan on actually holding on to this. And now, as you guys can see here, the reason why we're filming this is because I have a project plan for it. So given this engine's a little bit unknown and in need of some work, we are going to yank this drivetrain out. We're gonna yank out this crappy old four-speed because who wants a four-speed? Just so happens I have a complete E12 five-speed swap at the house, which I had from that parts car that I wanted to sell. But now I'm rethinking it and saying, yeah, I should probably put this thing back into a five speed that it was originally because it was originally a five speed, obviously a 528, 81 year. So we're gonna go ahead and make it back into its glory, give it a five speed, but we're also going to give it this. So looking at this, what the hell is this, right? This is the next phase for this car. So now a little quick backstory on this E12. This was the Hardy and Beck Turbo Basically, it was their like poster child car. You could go up back and see pictures of what I believe is this very E12 on some really cool wheels with all their cool turbo stuff. That is this car. So that's why the gauges that are inside the car, if you guys remember when I got it, those are turbo gauges. They read, you know, fuel pressure, oil pressure, boost, vacuum, all that stuff. Um, and those are the only parts of the car that were left. Someone bought it and stole all the H&B turbo stuff. Um, but it has the gauges, which in my mind is the most annoying thing. One of the most annoying things, wiring gauges. I don't like doing that. So in my head, I'm planning out what I want to do with this car. I had a lot of different thoughts. I'm like, ooh, an S38, that's expensive and hard to find. You know, oh, an S50, S52, like eh. Um, M30, B35 with ITBs, I already did that in the E28. So it's been a while, and actually I have never posted one on YouTube because I've always been, uh, that car was already built. I haven't done a turbo build with you guys. And I think given this was from new an H&B turbo car, I wanted to 
pay homage to that and put it back into what it once was, which was a Turbo M30. And that's what we have here. Luckily enough, I found this thing on Facebook and met a guy for it. His name was Josh as well. Awesome guy. Very cool. Lots of cool stuff he showed me. But basically had an E23 7 Series that had this in it, which this is an M30 B34 fitted with a CarTech turbo kit, which is basically 80s turbo. It's a bottom mount. I'll show you guys all about all around it. Run off a mega squirt, water to air intercooler, so no intercooler has to run the front of the car. And overall, just what's seeming like a pretty badass engine. Now, when I first thought about turboing this thing, I wanted to just turbo the M90. Well, M90s are probably the worst engine to turbo because they have the thinnest cylinder walls um, and they're higher compression, so it's easy to, I would say, blow a head gasket on them. Then I thought, oh, I'll put a B35 in there because I got a couple B35s sitting around now. But then this kit came up and he said, you want the whole engine with it? And I said, you know what, why not? Um, and I'm kind of glad I did that because as much as I was going to just take the kit off, I think I'm going to literally throw this in exactly what it is because it's basically already set up the harnesses on here. It's got all the supporting mods for the cooling and I think it's just a better idea. So let's take a closer look at what this is because it's pretty rad, it's pretty 80s and it should be fun. We can't forget to mention he also threw in the G265 that was on this. That is a G265. That is what the 80s 528i five-speed swap is. Very, very valuable transmission. Now I have two of them, which I am stoked about. Unfortunately, the drive shaft he said was shot. But anyway, back into this thing. So let's get this out of the way so we can at least look at what we're kind of working with here. Okay, we're dripping a little bit of water. Come on. Okay. So this is our water to air intercooler with blow off valve on it, tile blow off valve, tile wastegate, so that alone right there is cool. Basically, this thing runs a system of water, which he had in his trunk, with a little Volkswagen pump that circulates it. Basically put ice in a chest and it circulates the melting ice in through this and it's what cools your air. Supposedly more consistent and efficient than even an air intercooler, but I don't know, I wasn't gonna use this, but now I'm kinda of thinking, hey, like, that's already fab to work with this setup. I can literally slap this thing in, run the pump to cool it, and I don't have to do any fabrication work or nothing, which is crazy. And obviously, as you guys can see here, this thing retains AC. But back into the specs, so, like I said, CarTech Turbo, which is a name you probably have never heard, and if you have, then you're probably older than I am because I've never heard of it. But you basically have this cast log manifold which comes off and then the turbo mounts here, bottom mount. You can see in there, there's our turbo. So it spins, it doesn't have a lot of shaft play. It's seemingly a, a perfect turbo. This is a turbo, Turbonetics turbo. So CarTech manifold, Turbonetics turbo which is a little rusty, crusty, but supposedly it works. You have your tile blow off valve or tile wastegate right above the manifold here. It goes right in the manifold, which is really nice. And then down here into a, a downpipe, which looks to be maybe two and a half, maybe three, but I don't know. Um, and I mean, then your, your drain is right there. Turbo is water cooled as well. So you got your water line that I'm not sure why he cut it because it could have stayed, but, uh, yeah, your water line that runs there and it's got a fitting in the thermostat housing for it. And then the return of the water, um, I believe, oh yeah, we got a, oh actually I'm not sure what, oh I remember because some M30s didn't run the outlet coolant pipe in the back and I think this is a sourced one but it's facing the opposite direction of where it would factory and it's modified and blocked off and then it has a hose here, which I, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, oh, damn, it's, it's, never mind. I don't know what's going on here, but this is tapped straight into the block, which is crazy. Um, same thing with the, uh, 
with the, the turbo drain tapped right into the block, not even the pan, which I think is insane. But that's why basically like this engine is basically a turbo engine for life because those ports are not getting, um, not getting covered up. So I figured why not just run it as is. If it blows up, it blows up. He said that this thing was making probably over 400 horsepower, about 18 PSI of boost, which is actually impressive. To his knowledge, the internals aren't necessarily done. It supposedly doesn't have head studs, supposedly doesn't have uh, a head gasket, but bottom end we're unsure of. Um, I guess when I refresh a few things, we'll probably figure it out. But that's interesting. Clutch kit unknown, so we'll obviously pull the trans off and find that out. But the turbo stuff is all basically there, and I mean, it may not be the prettiest, but I think it'll work, and given that it's bottom mount, you won't really see it. And I think this will make for a freaking badass sleeper E12 that retains its heritage of being a turbo car. And like I said, the gauges are in there, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to wire and tie them in. Um, the wiring is a little messy, but supposedly everything that's cut is supposed to be cut because you don't need it. And then, I mean, it plugs right into the ECU. And I mean, all the wiring's done like we did on the E28 where you have your fuel and your tack kind of like customized. But I mean, supposedly like everything should kind of work. I should be able to hook it all in and go from there. And then in here, we have some spare parts, some, you know, clamp, shifter linkage. We have our mega squirt here. I'm not sure what era mega squirt this is, but it's obviously an older one. But supposedly it's already tuned, ready to go. So that right there is badass because this thing can hook right into its mega squirt. The wiring's already done. This is all your kind of your harness stuff. So this all looks, this goes right into the fuse box, which now I'm pretty sure the E12 has a different fuse box. Let's check it. I will be damned. I think the, I think the 81 E12 has the same fuse box connector. This very well might be a plug and play drop in turbo setup. I might not have to do any modifications and it'll run because I think that that fuse box connection is the same. And then it's obviously it's not running old style distributor. We have a whole MSD ignition setup here wired in. That's why this is also ugly, but hey, it's wired in and it works. So this thing's got MSD ignition. So, I mean, it has potential, right? If I built the engine up, we could probably make some pretty crazy power with this thing and all the hard, confusing stuff is already taken care of. Then here's our uh, intercooler piping where it comes in from that. Welded straight to the throttle body because he said he was having the pipes blow off. So like, boom, right there, that's taken care of. Your IAT sensor, ICV provisions are already done. It's got, I think he said 600 pound injectors, but would recommend stepping them up bigger. And he said they leak, so I'm gonna do new injectors on this thing, which I guess unless I get the same, um, the same exact flow rate, we'll probably need a retune, but we can play with it. Not quite sure how this factory TPS is working, but somehow it is. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this thing is, is pretty rad and I think it'll make for quite the ripper. And I think it'll make for a fun little series. And I don't know, I mean, it's been a while since I built a turbo car. I have a rather obnoxious, you know, high, higher horsepower E34, which is a, a chore in of itself to drive. I think this thing will be a nice little subtle kind of cruiser. I think it'll be a little bit more responsive, small little turbo. It's not gonna make crazy power numbers, or at least I'm not gonna build it to. Uh, to that because I think it'd be better to have kind of a, a fun little zippy but safe car. I don't, I'm not looking for a you know, 8 horsepower E12. I'm looking for fun and uh, period correct fun because I like to keep these cars kind of what they came with. You know, we could do an S52, but you're kind of ruining what it once was. Um, and that's a lot more work. This is basically uh, just send it in. So I'm excited. I'm very stoked to have found this. I got this for a fantastic deal. Um, so shout out to you, Josh, if you're watching this. But uh, I'm, I'm stoked. So this thing's gonna have a five speed in it. It's gonna have a turbo setup, cooler wheels, better suspension. I'm gonna have to dial in all the suspension because it's all so bad. This is like my back burner project for right now. So by the time you guys see this video, probably be months after I filmed it. And by the time we actually go about putting this in, it, we don't even know how long it'll be because I got a few projects in between. I'm gonna mess with this 
Probably get that 8 series going first. Ah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So I have a few things. Uh, I'm going to do an E9 project and stuff. So this is going to just be chilling, but I just wanted to show it to you guys. I like to show you guys the builds that I'm doing, get you guys familiar with it before we crack into it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick little glimpse into the E12's future. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you're excited for this series, because I know I am. So get this thing back to its former glory. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.